Praise God. Are you guys ready for the word? Thank you, Shad. You guys ready for the word this morning? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. We'll get your Bibles out. And we're going we're gonna to lift up and exalt the word right here. Just lift up the word. Lift it up over your head. If you're using your phone, does that seem too loud or shrill? It seems shrill to me. Um, lift your Bible or your phone up, point to the screen if you're watching the screen today. We're going to bless the word. Father, we thank you for the word this morning. We thank you that it's alive, it's powerful, it's sharper than a two-edged sword. It pierces to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And we thank you, God, today for this written word, that it can become the spoken word, and that it is the living word. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, I think you need to stand up. Come on. We're going to do a roar unto the Lord. Come on, stand up. Oh, my gosh, he's making us get up again. Lord Jesus I want, to, I want us to roar this morning. Wouldn't it be awesome if the whole roof blew off? I'd call the insurance guy and I'd say, oh, we have an issue with the roof. It blew off. How'd it blow off? There was no wind in Lancaster. Oh, yes, there was wind in Lancaster yesterday. It was the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One, two, three. Woo! Praise the Lord. You can sit down. Praise God. What are you guys getting up for anyway? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Here we are again. I still feel like that's too loud. I don't know. I'm going to yell today. It isn't? Okay, maybe it's just me. What's that? Yell? Preach it. Let me come out closer maybe. I don't know. Um, Acts 19, verse 11. So on our Wednesday night Bible study, if, you have, if you're not going to Bible study anywhere, and uh, you're, you're, you, don't, you, you feel like you're missing something, it's probably, not because, it's probably because you're not going to Bible study anywhere. Well, Pastor Tom, you shouldn't say that to people. They might not come back. Bye. If you're getting, Shad already said it earlier. I'm going to say it again. If, you're, if you get offended today, it's not my fault. It's your own fault where you're at, Right? I mean, are you listening to me? <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. Get ready. I'm going to tell you somebody, somebody might get a little, uh, you know, wrapped around the axle. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe not. Acts 19. So we're studying the book of Acts on Wednesday night in our in-person Bible study. And I also get a daily, um, I get a daily email and it just happens to right now be on the book of Acts, and it is at 1920. We've been, we went over 20, I think, last, this last Wednesday, right? So <clears throat> last week I was reading in 19, and there was some stuff that stuck out to me that I thought we should share today, because I think it's important. And <clears throat> I also think it's pretty cool that we're doing baptism today. Oh, so we got, uh, how many people getting baptized? Stand up, Bobby, and turn around so they can see all you stand up. So this is Bobby. This is Stephen. This is Benjamin. Is there anybody else getting baptized? Anybody else? Anybody else want to be baptized today? April, is that an imaginary person you brought with you today, Ron? Um, so anybody else? Um, you guys can sit down. So that we got these three guys. We got April. April's here. Okay, April. Oh, there she is. April's getting baptized. So we got four. Is there anybody else getting baptized today? And you say, oh, I want to, but I didn't bring clothes. Ha. We got clothes. We don't have underwear. We've had that discussion before. Um, we, we don't have extra underwear, but you could. Well, I won't talk about that. But you could still get baptized. We'll take care of you. Okay, you will have clothes to wear uh, shorts and shirt to get baptized. So uh, you don't have to make that decision now. If you look like you want to be baptized or need to be baptized, we do have a few guys that could drag you back and we'll just do it. Okay? I'm just kidding. 
I'm just kidding. Oh, Lord, help me today. Okay, Acts 19. And we're going to start in verse 11. I'm sorry, did I say 11? I think, oh, Jeff knows because I sent him the scriptures. Uh, God gave Paul the power to perform unusual miracles. Okay, let's keep going. When handkerchiefs or aprons that had merely touched his skin were placed on sick people, they were healed of their diseases, and evil spirits were expelled. Okay? This is miracle working power. If you watch my uh, Facebook video this morning, I, I said, What are you believing God for? Are you believing God? Are you believing God for something in your life? Are you believing for something to happen? Are you believing for something to change? Or are you just like floating through? I don't know. I sure hope God does something for me. I hope he does too. But you know what? I think that we can direct the power of God. People did it all the time, right? What about the woman with the issue of blood? We just went about over that last week, right? She touched uh, Jesus' garment. She got healed on the way while he was healing somebody, going to go heal somebody else. Who happened to turn the direction of Jesus? All right, let's keep going. Verse, uh, yes, a group of Jews was traveling from town to town casting out evil spirits. They tried to use the name of the Lord Jesus in their incantation, saying, I command you in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches to come out. These were people that were not believers, but they thought, well, hey, Paul does this, so why don't we try it too? They didn't know the power of God. They weren't in the family, so to speak. That means something. You can't just come into my house and, and get in my fridge without my permission. Isn't that true? I, I guess I can come into your house, right? Wow, are you guys just quiet? Are you done? Are you, are you finished for the day? You want to go home? No, we lock the doors. I'm just kidding. Um, and they said, I command you in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, to come out. Uh-oh, things are about to get interesting here. Seven sons of Sceva, a leading priest, were doing this. Okay, these guys were doing this, and they, they didn't know Jesus, but one time when they tried it, the evil spirit replied, I know Jesus, and I know Paul, but who are you? They, they, weren't, they didn't have the blood of Jesus on them. They weren't part of the family of God. You know, what, this is about family, isn't it? It is. It is about family. It's about blood, it's about family, it's about being part of what God uh, is doing and what he has done for us through Jesus Christ. And all, all you four need to be listening very carefully to this. Uh, probably all the rest of you could go home and I'll just speak to them. This is important stuff, but I know there's other people in here that need to hear this today. Uh, what's the next verse? Then the man with the evil spirit leaped on them, overpowered them, and attacked them with such violence that they fled from the house naked and battered. Now listen, this is where it gets interesting. This is, I mean, well, that was interesting, but this is where it gets interesting for us. The story of what happened spread quickly all through Ephesus to, to Jews and Greeks alike. And solemn fear descended on the city, and the name of the Lord Jesus was what? Greatly honored. This is, this is interesting, isn't it? Because somebody acted outside of their authority and there was evil that happened. And, you know, I think it's interesting that people were amazed and that Jesus was honored because they recognized evil spirits even recognize the power of God. They recognize it and they honor it and they listen to it. There are some people, maybe in this room, maybe you could do well to, to you know, uh, uh, evil spirits believe in God, and they pay attention. There might be people in this room, or people watching on, on uh, YouTube, you're not paying attention. You're just doing whatever you want to do, going out there, living however you want, and things are the same old, same old, and you're wondering why things aren't changing because you're not listening, you're not paying attention. You're not part of the family of God. You know, you're not acting like it. You're not doing what you're supposed to. Aren't you glad you came to church today? Hallelujah. Well, some of, some of you are. All right, let's keep going. 
many who became believers confessed their sinful practices. What do you think about that? Many who became believers confessed their sinful practices. Do you see, do you see what I'm saying? This is going to be a really simple message today and maybe not very long. Do you see what I'm seeing? Many who became believers confessed their rebellious, outside of God practices. Do you see what, I'm, see what we're talking about? When you become a believer, you begin to say, oh dear God, I am a sinner. God, I am filthy. Lord, my actions and my words and my attitudes and what I touch and where I go are filthy and I need your help. You know, the world doesn't believe that. Do you understand? The world doesn't believe that. The world thinks, the world system, the government and social services agencies and, and law enforcement and all those places, they truly think that they can change human behavior. They cannot. And they're not. They're failing miserably at it, by the way. If you don't believe me, just read the newspaper. Crime, I mean, the crimes that have been committed in Lancaster in the last 60 days are unbelievable. Every time I read them, I'm like, oh my goodness, this is Lancaster, Ohio. What's happening? What's happening? The government's failing, social services are failing, law enforcement is failing because they're rejecting Jesus. Oh, it should have been way bigger than that. Amen. I'm telling you. The only thing that's going to fix the world is Jesus. That's it. That's it. That's it. Nothing else. And the church is kind of failing miserably at it too. Let's just add us in there. You know, we're ashamed to talk about Jesus. We're, we're ashamed to stand for the things that are right and that are an abomination in the eyes of the Lord. We're, we're afraid to stand up for those things. Are you kidding me? There is judgment for that. I'm not going to list those things. I know some of you, many who became believers confessed their sinful practices. Are you a believer? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you love him? You know, are you, when you, when you fall and fail and you, you're outside of where you know he wants you to be, are you saying, God, I messed up. I sinned. I'm, I'm not where I'm supposed to be. Help me, Jesus. You know, I think a lot of us might do that. I think a lot of us might do that. Hmm. Um, verse uh, 19. A number of them had been practicing sorcery, brought through, their, uh, brought through their incantation books, and burned them at a public bonfire. The value of the books was several million dollars. Now that's where the rubber meets the road, isn't it? Huh? I'm, and I'm going to make it really difficult for you today. I just want you to know that. I want you to know that. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to make it really difficult for you. And you know what? I'm going to love every minute of it. Because God does that to me. Um, uh, let's, let's read verse 20, and we'll be finished with this. So the message about the Lord spread widely and had a powerful impact, is that what it's, or effect, powerful effect, impact, effect, a powerful result. So um, I want to ask a question, get ready, and this probably doesn't apply to anybody in here. Does anybody know what the definition of the word paraphernalia is? Anybody? Anybody have an idea? Some people are looking at me like, uh, no. Do you know what it is, Jeff? Stuff. Oh, say it again. Stuff. Stuff. Tr Tracy. Objects. Objects used for. Somebody look it up on your phone. Look up. Uh, go to your internet and type define paraphernalia. I want someone to read the actual uh, Webster's dictionary. Uh, uh, Ryan. Ob say it again. Objects. Objects that are used uh, in the misuse of other subjects. Okay, does somebody find it? Does somebody find the definition? Oh, okay, come up here. Come on, oh, come up here, Chelsea. 
Yes, I told you I was going to make it really difficult. Chelsea's never been up here before. Praise the Lord. Okay, Woo, Chelsea. It says miscellaneous articles, especially the equipment needed for a particular activity, such as drills, saws, other paraphernalia necessary for home improvements. Oh, home improvements. Thank you. Home improvements. Did you know that? Did you all know that paraphernalia is used for home improvements? <laughs> that was a Home Depot de definition. <laughs> I would like to hear the sheriff's office definition of paraphernalia or the court. Uh, it would probably be a little different. Okay, let's, let's get this definition. That's very good, very good. Uh, define implement, 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 right? I got it, uh, yeah, implement. What, what is it, Perry? Put to put into place. I'm talking about implements, implements, not implement, but implements. Yo, you're cool, you're cool. I was going over that in my head this morning. Does somebody have it? Yeah, Randy. Additional items to a main source, implements. Anybody? So somebody going to read the def, the, what, who's got it? Oh, come up here, Brittany. Yes, if I said so, I'm the pastor. You have to do everything I say it's in this room. <laughs> in this room. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It says, a tool, utensil, or other piece of equipment, especially as used for a particular purpose. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So what were the implements of their sin? Here. Well, that scripture is gone, if we could have that back. I think it was, was it verse 20? Verse 20 of Acts chapter 19. Huh? Huh? Books, they were books. They were books of incantations uh, 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 in, of, uh, uh, bah, uh, bah, easy for me to say, of sorcery, right? And do you know, what does the Bible say? A number of them have been practicing sorcery, uh, brought their incantation books and burned them at a public a bonfire, okay? So what does the Bible say about sorcery and magic and the, and, and the black arts and all that stuff? What does the Bible say about that? What? It's an abomination unto the Lord. So what happened to these people? They confessed their sins. They believed and they confessed their sins. Right? And what's the next thing that happened? They burned their paraphernalia. They destroyed it. And you know what? I was thinking about this. Nobody in this room and nobody watching would understand this, but you know, what if somebody came along and gave you a million dollars worth of, oh, maybe heroin, or meth, or cocaine, or maybe, uh, you know, liquor, of, you know, of some sort. And, you know, here, here it is, here it is. Here it is, here it is, here's all that. Wow. I mean, I don't want this anymore. I don't want that anymore because I've confessed my sin and I've accepted Jesus Christ. He lives in my life, you know? And, you know, what now, well, you know what? That's, a, that's a, several million in, in my translation. My, my Bible, it said $8 million. I don't know what $8 million worth of drugs looks like, but I'm sure it's quite a bit. So, you know, here it is. $8 million, what do I do with it? Well, you know, I could sell it, because I don't want it anymore, but you know, someone's gonna use it, right? But, or what, I, what would I do? Burn it, get rid of it. I know this is, I think this is a tough subject, not because anybody in here would struggle with that or anybody watching, but I think we struggle with this every day. And God, God speaks to us about our sin. And he says, look, I want this out of your life. And then we go back and we look at the paraphernalia that we've collected. You know, for some people that might be a Playboy magazine. It might be the magazines that you look at or the books that you look at that God says, this is an abomination to me. I want you to get rid of it. I want you to destroy it. Don't give it to somebody else. 
destroy it. There is something about dealing, because you're, well, there's something about destroying that thing that used to be valuable in your life, and you saying, I'm getting that out of my life, and I'm not going to let it get into somebody else's. And I, I don't know who, but you know what? I'm, I'm talking to these four people right here. And any of you that have been baptized, do you realize these four people, stand up, stand up, so, a second, um, 48, 49, 50, 51, you can sit back down, 51 people we've baptized in that tank since last June. Now, I'd like to see some of those people and say, are you living God's life every day? Yes, ma'am. Come up here so you can be on. It's on record. <laughs> so um, this past week I had to move um, someone very close to me. I had to pack their stuff up um, and get rid of their things. It's funny that you said that because I came across a lot of things. Um, and uh, I now know what to do with it. So, thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> you know, you know, if you think that I don't struggle with what I feel the Lord has me to speak, I do. Because I like to be liked. <laughs> you know what I mean? I like to be liked. But, you know, I've decided the truth is more important than me to be liked. It is more important that you hear what God says. So, uh, I, I want to ask you to do, I told you I'm going to make you feel uncomfortable. Name some of the things that, name some of the items that have played a role in your life of sin, rebellion. And April just did. She said, I came across some stuff. Does everybody know what stuff means? Okay, thank you. I'm not going to go. Yeah, yes, thank you. What's that? Pride. Anybody else? Something that you, that you know you got to get rid of or that you've been working on getting rid of or God has spoken you to get rid of and you feel comfortable to say, this. Is, yes, ma'am. Offense and anger. Don't raise your hand, but anybody else in here, uh, excuse me, deal with pride, offense, or anger? Yeah. Uh, Manette. What's that? Anger. Thoughts and actions, jealousy, what's that? Depression, what's that? Anxiety, yes, sir. Addiction, getting rid of it, yes, sir. Procrastination, yeah. Ta -ta 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 -ta. And you know, how often do we procrastinate when God tells us to do something and we don't? I'm going to tell you something. I got the phone call from Danny, not the phone call, but the Facebook message from, it was a few days later that I spoke to him on the phone, but I, I got the Facebook message uh, from uh, Danny Van Gundy about uh, the food giveaway today, and this is, this, you know, you think, what, procrastination? Absolutely, because first thing my mind did, it, <laughs> how are we going to do that, God? Right? Uh, do you want, don't, don't you do that? God says, hey, I want you to do this. And you start making a list of all the reasons why you can and all the stuff you've got to do. And your stuff is important stuff, right? And I got to do it. I mean, come on, you know what I'm talking about. And then it was just like, duh, dummy, what are you thinking? This is food for people. God's putting something in our hand to put in others' hands, and that we're just a, we're just a pipe, we're just a tube, you know. Anybody else got anything? You're struggling. Yes, sir. Control. <laughs> yeah, some of us might have an issue with that sometimes. <laughs> stop it, all of you! Stop it right now! I'm going to kick all of you out of this church. We'll start over again. What? <laughs> what? Arrogance, arrogance is a big one. We get stubbornness. Ooh, Brittany. Ooh, ba, 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 ba. 
Horoscopes, tarot cards, denial. You know, how many of us are, are touching the unclean thing? Nobody's mentioned it. Can I? I guess I've, take, I've gone this far. Telephone, is telephones you say? Cell phones? How about uh, sexual relationships? Now you don't want to come back, do you? <laughs> sexual relationships. Uh, what? Uh, what? Uh, Lost, thank you. Yeah. See, now we're getting, see if we go on far enough, we'll, we'll, we'll keep getting the stuff that's going to, you're going to be like, I'm <laughs> I don't know if I, uh, this is a real nice church, but I don't know if I belong here. Well, I'm just saying. Things changed quickly in this city when two things happened. Open confession of evil deeds. Did you see? We saw it. We just read it. There was open confession. There was open confession of evil deeds. People repented for their sin. And the next thing, there was destruction of the accursed items. Things that they had. What made these people go into their houses and pull stuff out? Wow, that causes me to fall. Wow, that causes me to fall. Wow, that's not godly. These aren't people that, that sat around and watched preachers on TV and, and had pff, hundreds of years of going to church. They just heard the gospel message. Their hearts were changed. They believed in Jesus. And they said, we got to get this stuff out of here. I don't care how much I paid for it. I don't care how much I paid for it. It's got to go. See, nobody wants to hear this kind of stuff, but we need to hear this kind of stuff. You know, some people do not understand why God is not moving in their lives, but they're unwilling to change. They are unwilling to take the junk out. And, and you know what? It makes sick bodies. It makes sick minds. It, it causes destruction in relationships, in jobs, all sorts of things. Um, sin and unrepentance stops the word from growing within us. Let me say it again. Sin and unrepentance stops the word of God from growing within us. It's a blocker. It's a blocker. Uh, Luke 24. You know, sin and unrepentance causes dryness. It'll cause dryness and rot to your bones. And, and people are, can be unrepentant about all kinds of things. You know, if Tammy and I have a, have a fight, which we don't very often, do we? And I usually immediately back down and everything's cool. <laughs> no. But if we have an argument, then one of us, <laughs> oh, I wish you could see this beautiful face. Stand up here so they can see your beautiful face. Oh, oh, you're going to find this very hard to believe, but I'm usually the, the source of consternation, aren't I? <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> Sit down! We, I've learned we, we have to come back together and repent and say, hey, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have acted like that. I was being a jerk. I'm telling you all my lines in case you need them. Uh, because they work, and they're the truth. They're from the heart. Luke 24, 13. That same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. As they walked along, they were talking about everything that had happened. Jesus had been crucified. He had been put in the tomb. And then some, some of the ladies had gone to the tomb, and Jesus was not there, and they saw angels there. Okay, that's what these guys are talking about. As they talked and discussed these things, Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. But God kept them from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you, uh, what are you discussing so intently as you walk along? And they stopped short, uh, sadness written across their faces, then one of them, Cleopas, replied, you must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about all the things that have happened there the last few days. 
What things, Jesus asked, the things that happened to Jesus, the man from Nazareth, they said, he was a prophet who did powerful miracles, and he was a mighty teacher in the eyes of God and all the people. But our leading priests and other religious leaders handed him over to be condemned to death, and they crucified him. We had hoped he was the Messiah. Do you see that? Okay, what, what, okay, if you know the English language, if, you're, if you've studied in school and you did your homework, what is the tense of we had hoped? It's past tense. What does that mean? They lost hope. Their hope was gone. They lost their hope because of what they saw. They saw Jesus crucified. They saw him taken down dead on that, off that cross. They saw him put in a tomb. We... we thought maybe he was the son of God. <laughs> you know what? I don't want my hope to be past tense. I don't want my trust to be past tense. But what happens is when the house gets dirty and, and the word doesn't grow, your faith diminishes. And you look at circumstances and everything around you. And you begin to lose hope. Uh, did I read 20? Yeah, I read 21. Um, go to John 6, 48. Here's the answer to our dryness. Yes, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Amen. Jesus is the bread of life. And you say, how does this fit in with house cleaning? I, f I felt like what happens, uh, we're talking about house cleaning. Did you know that? That's what I titled this message, house cleaning. Because there are some of you who need to go home and you need to clean your house. You need to clean. And I'm not looking at Tammy when I say that. <laughs> it will be bad for me if I do. You need to go home and clean your house. And I'm not just talking about, you know, cleaning the toilet and cleaning the sink and sweeping the floors. I'm talking about getting the stuff out that's not supposed to be there. Some of you have pigs living in your house. Your hope is gone. Your faith is gone. Things are a mess. And you're wondering... Why? What? You know, th these four folks are getting baptized today. And I, I kept thinking about this. I kept thinking about this me message, and I thought, what a perfect message for baptism. What a perfect message that this is what this is about. You're going to go up there. I'm going to bury you, literally, in water. And I'm going to hold Bobby under for an extra long time. <laughs> All in favor. Hey, you, we, we got people wanting it to happen, man. I'm thrilled that these folks are getting baptized. But I'm all, I mean, in front of everybody. It's going to happen in front of everybody. They're all going to see you go down and see you come back up. And when you come back up, you come back up to newness of life. You come back up resurrected new people. Clean. And I believe the house is clean. But, there, but there's this repentance that you're doing. You, you've repented. I'm assuming you've all accepted Jesus Christ. I'm going to ask you up there and make you say it in front of everybody. And then, and then, so what is that? They said they believed in Jesus. And then what happened? They went, they went back home. They had to go back home, and they cleaned out the house. And, and I thought about, well, how does this, how does this, how does this hope thing stack up with this? I think it stacks up because it's like what Jesus does for us when he comes into our life, he gives us hope. He gives us peace. He gives us strength to be able to live this life. And suddenly the things that, that uh, you couldn't deal with anymore, that you, couldn't, that you couldn't handle anymore, the people. I'll bet if I went through every person in this room, there is somebody that you can name, I cannot, if I have to, if that person says one more thing to me, I mean, suddenly 
You, God gives you the ability. He gives you the ability to, to deal with things. Um, John 6.35 up there. Jesus replied, I'm the bread of life. Ha, look at this, look at this. Jesus replied, I'm the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Amen. How about that? We're gonna feed people today by, by our brother in Columbus who said, called me and said, hey, I wanna bring food down. Can you guys distribute it? Pfft, yeah, bring it down, buddy. We'll find somebody to take that food. Um, whoever believes in me will never be thirsty Think about this. Think about the people that are out there. Listen, think about this. There's people out there right now. They're hungry for drugs. They're hungry for alcohol. They're hungry for the things that are going to destroy them. They're going to put needles in their arm or snort stuff up their nose or take drinks down. And we're sitting here knowing that Jesus is the quencher of hunger and thirst. And what, what are we about? You know, I, this, this is my personal opinion. I, I spoke with a young lady at the, at the jail on Friday, which is usually my day to speak to the ladies that asked to see me one-on-one. -on -one. And it was such an amazing time for me because, I mean, God is always showing me that I, in my opinion of people and what I think, is so small compared to how he is. And this young lady was so distraught, and she was just crying and crying, and every other word was the F word. And I was like, wow. I've never seen, I didn't, I had not seen that person that way before. And I was like, God, I don't know what words to say to this lady. I don't know what to say to her. But by the time she walked out of that room, she was smiling and she was at peace with the next leg of her journey, which she was not happy about. And I felt like, Lord, you don't see people the way I see people. You don't see us the way I see us. And I, it was amazing to me, and I thought, he can take anybody. And, and people that we think, I know, I bet you're, there's people that if, if you brought to mind, you know, this person that you think is a total waste, they're never going anywhere, they're crazy, they're a crackpot. And God says, I got my hand on that person. I got my hand on that person. And oh, by the way, Tom, and oh, by the way, Tom, you are the carrier of a miracle into their life today. You know what? I, I want to get rid of the accursed things out of my life. And I know, I know there's stuff that I allow to be in my life that, that diminishes what I believe God wants me to be. Um... He wants to quench your thirst and your hunger. One more verse. Actually, just two more verses. Sorry. <laughs> I always say that. Uh, one, uh, the Spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. And the very words I've spoken to you are spirit and life. The words that God is speaking to us are words of spirit and life today. And how you take them when we walk out this door today is totally up to you. What you do with it. Whether you go home and say, you know what? You know, like, like April said, I know what to do now. Do you know sometimes it takes somebody to say something to us and you could be the person to say something to somebody because you did what God told you to do. And then you become the light in somebody's life. And you say that word and then something happens and they get rid of stuff that doesn't, shouldn't be there. Uh, one more verse, Acts 3.10. When they realized... Um, no, that's not it. Acts 3.10? Is that it? Is that Acts 3.10? That's three? I can't see the scripture. Um, let me see here. Is that right? That's Acts 3.10? Okay, that's not the scripture. I gave you the wrong one then. Um, please, the trouble is not in your set. Do you guys remember that message? The trouble is not in your set. It's at the TV station. Let me see here. 
Uh, repent. Repent. Read 319, is that it? Oh, there we go. That's it, 319. So ten, one, zero with a thing on it, thanks. Uh, now repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. Okay? That's what we're talking about here. But it's not just to these four, it's to all of us. It's to all of us. What does repent mean? Somebody give me the definition of repent. What? Tur what? Turn away? Oh, what? Somebody else give me something. What? Confess? What? Turn around. Turn around. Repent. Go the other direction. Repent. 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 Okay, I'm going to let you four go back. Uh, Ron and Kathy, are you going to help uh, April? Thank you. Go back with them to the back. Get ready. They will help you. If, uh, hey, Ron, if one of these guys needs to use the restroom to change in, that would be cool too. Since you got three, we'll try to get them ready as quick as possible. Um, and I want to say some things to you while they're getting ready. And then I'm going to run back and get ready. And we need to pray that the water is warm. In case you saw my, if I squeal, you'll know what happened. So today at 2, between 2 and 2.30, they're going to bring the food. How many people are going to be able to stay and help or come later, come this afternoon and help? Okay, so great. Listen, this is what we need to have happen. This whole side of the building. I don't want any cars here, but we can park over there and over there, of course. I want him to put the skids of food right here, and then folks can just pull through the drive, through the, 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 the food drive-through, <laughs> and that we, we will put the food in their cars, and then they will go around and out, okay? If you have told people that you will take them food, what you should do is take those, you've, you've made a commitment, take those boxes of food and milk and put them in your car until we're all done, and then we'll serve everybody that comes through. If we have boxes of food and milk left, we all have to find people to give them to, okay? We can't let that food go to waste. So I don't think it's going to, I think it's all gonna be distributed, but we need to make sure um, that we get all that distributed. So as many people as wanna come and help with that, I'm sure we can use the help. And if, there's, if, if we don't need the help, we're fellowshipping and we're together, okay? Uh, one more thing, and then I'm gonna go back and change myself. Um, or what are we doing for worship, Tiffy? Okay, thank you. So um, she's right on that, I can tell. So this coming Friday night, okay, uh, we have more tickets available. Um, if you have not gotten a ticket to this Friday night, uh, we have tickets available for that. It starts at 6.30, okay? Worship starts at 6.30 right in here. But we're, because we are, we're having, we've invited 150 people to come over and fellowship with us, okay? So what does that mean? We have to do a lot of creative things with parking. So what we've decided is that all of the Cornerstone people, if you will, please, park over at the Plaza Shopping Center, and we're parking people in specific areas, and Maywood Mission, has given us the use of their minibus. So we will, uh, if you're over at the plaza, you will be bussed over to here, and likewise after the pastor's forum, okay? So it's, we've got a nice little thing worked out. It'll be very, it'll flow beautifully, but if you are coming and you're from Cornerstone, we ask you to park at the plaza so that all of our other guests can park around the building. So one, one second, one second. So here's the other thing. If you signed up to help be a greeter, uh, building security, parking, we do want to meet with you, if possible, real quick after, and that is Sean L., Lori, Sandra, Jamie, Jody, Monica, Rhonda, Randy, Diana, um, Newton, Denise, Chris Ferguson, John King, Stephen Chapman, who's getting baptized, Perry Newton, Ron, and Scott. And we need a couple more parking people. We want to make sure we have plenty of parking people to make sure that everybody knows what to do and how to do it. If you can meet with us for a few minutes 
after the service, it might be 1230-ish before I'm completely redressed and back out here. But if you could stay, if I just read your name, I want to just, I won't have a chance before this Friday. I want to tell you what we're going to do and how that's going to work. Okay? What did you want? Okay. I'm going to tell you all, if you can stay till 1230, I'm going to tell you exactly what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. Yes, sir. I'm sorry? Sure. Absolutely. Of course. Yes. The Plaza Shopping Center right over there where uh, Ollie's is. But you, we'll, we won't be parking by Ollie's. There's a specific area. We will, we will guide and direct you to where you're supposed to park. But um, so anyway, everybody got that? 1230. Let me run back. So what's the... They're going to play some music while I'm getting ready. Here. Oh, will somebody be in charge of giving these tickets out to people as they go out the door? Who will do that? Who will do that? Who will do that? Who will do that? You will. Thank you. So be at the door. the Lord. This is Stephen, and there, okay, there you go. So, Stephen, have you accepted Jesus into your life? Yes, I have. And are you ready to do this? No one's asking you to do this. No one at all, just me. Praise the Lord. Any, anything you want to tell us about why you want to do this? Um, because I've changed my life from an addiction. Um, I just want to have a great life in Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, I've known Bobby for a long time, right? Bobby, have I known you for a long time? And this guy, this is a big deal, man. 
This is a very big deal. Bobby, why are you doing this today? Because I want God in my life and change it. Do the right thing and help people. Praise the Lord. And I believe, listen, does anybody out, anybody out there know Bobby? Okay, listen, we're all going to believe that when Bobby goes down, his old, dead life goes under this water and it never comes back. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior? Yes. Praise the Lord. the Lord. This is Ben, right Ben? Yep. And uh, I, I, this first Benjamin, I, have I met you before? Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. So I've met Ben before. So Ben, what's the deal with today? Why did you decide to do this today? I want to wash away all my sins and be reborn. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So you've accepted Jesus. Uh, Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. Listen, let's, let's pray before we go. Listen, if there's anybody that needs prayer, uh, Brenda and Bill, you come up. And I want you to pray for anybody that needs prayer today. Please don't leave this place if you need prayer. If you've signed up to help this Friday, if you will just stay a few minutes. It's just going to take a few minutes for me to tell you what's going on. Let's, let's pray. Tammy, you pray us out of here. And Bill and Brenda are going to pray for you before you go. You come up here and get prayer from them. The prayer uh, oil's over there, guys. Amen. Go ahead, Tammy. Father, we thank you for this time of fellowship today and uh, just coming together and for the uh, baptisms today. We just thank you for your anointing and blessing on us as we go. And, Father, I just pray that we will be able to reach many people today um, with food, with the giveaway of yes. this food. And we just thank yes. you that you just... Uh, Show Hallelujah. us the people that we need yes. to deliver this food to and yes. the people that we need to let know. In Jesus Praise name, the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Listen, if you need prayer, come up and get it from Brenda and, and Bill. If you're staying to help, please just come up in these couple front pews, and I'll be out there in just a minute.